Welcome, everyone. Um, we have a couple amendments to our agenda. One of them is that the sketch planned PUD has been withdrawn. That was a continued application from earlier this year. The other next next change is that the ETC next master plan is now a discussion. So we've really just changed the wording on that. And then we've also removed the discussion on zoning regulations. So with that, um, we'll open the floor for public comments for things that aren't on the agenda, because we're going to get to the, if, it's, if you're just here to, for the ETC, we're getting to that next. With that, we'll move on to the ETC next discussion. It's a discussion, so I don't think we're, we're not hearing testimony on an application. So Darren and Sharon, that kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Darren and Sharon, you're caring about what we're seeing tonight. <laughs> we have a Karen up upstairs, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're in, we're here to talk about the ETC. That was a good one, wasn't it? I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, so I will just point out that we have somebody in the audience who wants to just have a statement regarding his lot specifically. Didn't know if he wanted to entertain comments first. It, I got the vibe he wasn't looking to stay and hear all the. Well, we won't be here too long, so we'll get right to you in a minute. I'm assuming that's the gentleman you're referring to. That, okay. The one you heard us talk to, yes. Yes. Um, Good guess. We have a draft of the plan that's cleaned up um, and formatted and it contains if not all then at least most of the items that we had been looking for did you is there any discussion or commentary that we need to know about from the consultants and or Dana who's not here tonight um, that that might be relevant to our for us to know about so um, and Dana extends her apologies for not being able to attend she's not feeling well um, since we scheduled this meeting and sent out the final draft form, um, we have met with the town manager's office who has requested that staff meets with the, with the other okay. staff departments. So, let, 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 so we're going to just... So let's hold that piece until later. Okay. I'd like to talk about the changes that we requested in the plan. I'd like to talk about the actual plan itself because that's, that's one of the things that we're most interested in understanding that there's another component to be addressed tonight mm -hmm. um that's not necessarily that's uh, fine so we'd let i'll let darren speak to that yeah, i'm sorry for the technical difficulties apparently the projectors are acting up so we won't be able to display things up like we normally will but we can run through them um since you all have access and we have our print copies. since you're getting ready yep. sir if you'd like to to Give your comments to us if you could state your name for the recordings. Yeah, uh, Ben Burrow. Um, my family owns 54 Lost Nation Road. Um, so, what was, uh, and I have some letters here from my father in law who's probably technically the owner of the land. Um, what was concerning is when we were reviewing the, the, the plant, the ETC plan on page four, there's a zoning map that's referenced in there. Um, first of all, I don't know if our land's even technically considered to be in what you would consider the town center, but regardless of that, there's a zoning map in there that says something about current zoning, and the front part of our property has uh, an arc in it that says open recreation area, but our land has been agricultural residential since it was purchased by my father-in-law in the there's some floodplain through there, but it's in the agricultural residential chunk on that land. And that page four of the ETC plan has a little green arc through it that says, um, that says uh, open recreation. So that we're kind of uh, questioning that and knowing that I saw some other stuff saying that the, that you know the future zoning will maybe be tailored to whatever's in this plan even though we're not in the town center i'm just afraid that there's a a map there that isn't accurate 
Yeah, uh, I don't believe that anything on... I'm oh, sorry, Dusty, I'll let you. No, please. I don't believe that anything on Lost Nation Road besides the first uh, couple thousand feet at most, first couple hundred to a thousand feet was supposed to be a part of the plan and yeah. part of the new zoning. Um, so I'm trying to check where 54 Lost Nation is and relative to yeah. that. Yeah, you'll um, see. I don't know if you have a map there. You'll see. Normally I could pull it up on this. See that green arc? Yeah. It's right there. Right there. Right there. So this chunk had always been either, you know, part floodplain or it's always agricultural residential, even that arc. So I don't know why it's so let's, owned as Let's that. see if we can find the existing, I mean, do we have the, uh, the regulation? You get the zone. Yeah. It just, here's a stack of my, from my father-in-law of letters. If you get right to Sharon. Yeah, you can. So he's just wondering if you could have a letter sent to him about what, the discrepancy is so if it's oh you have it too. okay it'd be right here see that see how that's the yep, that's there but it's replaced on there with the green so that's a r there right and that's i would say the, that's an in, i would say that's a loss a change that should yeah. not be there correct and that's okay. the developable <clears throat> part of the land so we don't want it to be zoned as an open recreation. Well, and the way this plan, yeah, that would make absolutely no sense. Yeah. Right there. Just seems like that, that should be an so arc that, that's... Darren, that looks to be a, incorrect. Yeah, that's uh, not the existing zoning, nor is it proposed. Okay. So, so that needs to be sure changed back to brown. Back to AR. Yeah, it's going to be changed back to brown, and can somebody just send a letter to my father-in-law like he asks? And then if, if you have your email address on that... She, he gave you a letter. Oh, I see. Is it Edward Barber? Yeah, he West put his address. His name Does he have email? No. Okay. Yes. But yours is on that thing. I'll add it. Sure. Thank good, you. Good catch. Thank you. Okay. That was a test. Somebody in the public actually read the plan. Uh, yeah. Covered it cover <laughs> beyond Paula. Thank you for bringing that in. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank right. you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, you guys are regulars, so I mean. <laughs> Okay, Darren, if we can sort of go through, I know we've got the, um, you've got the summary of the commentary, su staff summary, and the addressed comments. We've got two documents in our, in our. Uh... Yep. So uh, the first is just uh, restating what staff understood the changes requested uh, to be, and we sent that along to the um, consultants for their changes. So uh, that was going in and then coming back out of the revision process is the other document that's titled SE Group Changes, um, which starts by, it starts with comment author Dave Raphael, comment date 72419, um, and it just runs through all of the changes that were requested or made, uh, proposed, and um, just summarizes those. So that's all we wanted. We just wanted to show you those that, you know, it's basically a track changes without it being in the document. Okay. Um. And if you have any uh, issues with what was sent to them and what came back out, now would be the time to let us know and we'll pass those back on for further revision. So what about all, I mean, I gave more than just grammatical and spelling errors. So where, where would the rest of those have gone? So it might have been in the, um, the consultants Consolidate a lot, consolidated a lot of comments from different people if they were similar, and they might have just put that in. Uh, Somebody else's name. What was that? Under someone else's. Under someone else's name or as a general concern. Um, but let me just check. Did you notice, Dave, if there were some comments that you didn't see? Are you talking about written comments or? Yeah, so that stuff was addressed. Any uh, changes in terms of, you know, updating information and inaccuracies were definitely corrected. So they didn't list those, but uh, we'll double check based on your comments on how they used to make <coughs> to us. I'll, just I'll go back through as well. I kept them, so. What was that? I'll go back through as well. And we can ask them to beef it up. I haven't had a chance to go and check every one of them yet, so I will. Yeah, it might be good to have since I'm concerned that it was they were necessarily cherry picked. 
they might have, you know, the, the items might have been decided that this is workable, so let's work on it, and let's not work on that. And if we're not, if something isn't going to have been worked on, let's, let's actually put a note to that effect. Okay. And John went through and did, John wrote a book about it. Um, John wrote a book about it. <laughs> so it would be good just to, I mean, we can go back through, but let's just. If, Does he have the book he can forward? Well, we have those. Drop on Google. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it would just be good to make sure that everything was at least looked at and acknowledged. Um, that way, if somebody has an issue with something that was skipped, we can discuss those directly. So are the, are the changes on the town website? It's in the, they should be in the final draft that's on the website. But you don't have the list of changes that was made. Uh, you you just have, have it's not public. Is that we can potentially make it available. Well, um, we'll have the consultants develop one for us and add whatever their concerns are here that. I would like to see them because hmm? I've been witness to all of the discussions. Well, we can give you a copy of these two memos that they're looking at. Oh, okay, that would be helpful. That's fine. Okay. So, commissioners, what um, in general thoughts or um, Discussion points on the draft that's in front of us tonight, or the draft that's with us tonight. John. That's Johnny. Johnny? Okay, um, Johnny. Well, I, I gave my <clears throat> comments and they essentially responded, but not, I, don't, I don't know that they changed anything, so I'm not sure where to go with that. Uh, okay. The responses were, um, uh, you know, reasonable but if that no no real discussion or anything happens I don't know where that leaves us um, so I was sort of expecting us to be talking about it not necessarily getting a you know that's nice but we we got it taken care of kind of thing from the consultants uh, so I, I as far as I'm concerned they're still on the table if nobody else cares about them I'm just they're just my comments so that's fine but uh, um, I thought we would all be talking about each other's comments before we decided what to tell the consultants to do. Um, and I came up with some more, qu I have just one more question that okay. at some point tonight, but um, when I was looking through the neighborhood stuff for the mixed use south and for the uh, neighborhood um, commercial, it's um, the and if you look on uh, just just for example, if we're on page um, uh, sixty-one, I'm just gonna go and grab me. the page numbers. All right, so mixed use south on the new version, it's in the mixed use south um, lots and density box, so it. It's chapter six, page sixty-one, as noted on the page number on the actual sheet. Um, it's uh, just tell me if I'm missing something here. Um, One hundred and thirty-eight acres total area. The existing residential units are one hundred sixty-five dwelling units. The projected residential units are five hundred ninety-six. So we're proposing to grow residential units, but then you get to the um, existing non-residentials, uh, 495,000 gross square feet, and the projected non-residential is less than that at 427,000 gross square feet. So are we actually saying we're trying to reduce non-residential use there? Sorry, I missed your comment because I don't have So it. he's just questioning this chart right here, and, and is the purpose we're trying to reduce the non-residential I think footage. that's how that reads, John, because if you look at, like, the projected, is that, well, maybe it is, maybe I'm misreading it. Is that total or is that added? Is that additional or total, well, I guess would be the question. Yeah, I'm reading it that they're saying it goes down. That's the yeah. way I'm reading it. Yes. So that's, right, but same with the residential. So are we going from well, 165 to 596, or is it an additional 596 on top of the 165? I think those are projected totals of my... I believe correct? that's correct, and there's a we can confirm that um, on page 
uh, it's in chapter two, I believe. There's a um, suggestion of the build out for, or actually no, it's in um, it's in one of the appendices, I believe, which may not have been updated yet. Um, but somewhere there is a, a full build out analysis. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm fairly certain that um, those are projected final numbers, not in addition to what's there today. And in terms of the non-residential square footage, I think the idea is that there's already a lack of um, ability to fill non-residential space in the mixed use south area, particularly with the outlets. Um, so the idea was that it's going to focus slightly more on residential in order to help make sure that those non-residential spaces are viable. Um, and so there's an assumption that it will go down a little bit, but that they'll be stronger. Um, so in the, in the discussion on that, just following uh, that topic, is there, um, you know, like I'm sure real estate people have some kind of, you know, numbers that say it, in order to be viable, mm -hmm. these are the typical balances that you see in this type of area, in this type of area. So we have um, municipal, uh, we have mixed use north, uh, they're projecting 20% um, of the areas used, or you know, I don't know how this is, uh, the land use mix is 20% um, uh, non-residential in um, neighborhood commercial, it's 10% and historic, it's 10%. So the largest non-residential usage area is projected to be in the mixed use south and they're saying we got to shrink it from what we have and I'm just I'm going wow I you know does that leave us enough like is that mix like what do we know about that mix do you guys all know about what the right mix should be and are we are we really saying we want less commercial space and if we need commercial space at some point where does it go like where you know what I mean? If we're saying, well, you can't put it here because we're already happy. We took away the, the percentages in the town center. So, yeah. yes, your thinking, your thought process is correct. So, and part of the idea behind using the um, regulatory approach that's suggested is to allow spaces to be converted between residential and non-residential, particularly, particularly on the ground floor. Um, so even if you have a full fully residential building, presumably that ground floor could be converted back to commercial as the market demands. So there's built-in flexibility. There's built-in flexibility. Um, and these tar these um, build-out summaries are targets. They're not, you know, it has to be exactly 427, 920 square feet of commercial space. Um, it's just saying, here's our target, here's what we're generally aiming for in a relative mix. Um, it may be more or less, depending on what the market does over 10 to 20 years and is our commercial square footage skewed a little bit at the moment because we have the outlets so if you were weren't to sort of segregate okay i've got my outlets here and everything else a normal mix would tend to fall into these ranges is that kind of where this is headed yeah the outlets were designed as a destination commercial area not serving just the community but the entire county and region we're recognizing that that's not necessarily the future of what it'll hold and that it should be somewhat destination serving but also um, local serving in this neighborhood area and the town as a whole but not necessarily drawing people from Montpelier on a regular basis. Yeah. The circuit's done. Right. The circuit sort of killed it. All right. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm fine especially with this as a vision and, and if it's tied back to sort of known blends that that are successful i think that you know it's probably fine but it just it's a good point struck me that we were saying hey all that commercial space that we have is gonna we're aiming for it to shrink it seemed a little interesting uh, you have additional questions that, that was that was my big find so with something like that would we I mean, you had a you had a phrasing that that these are targets and they're expected. I mean, that seems to me to be a really a significant concept to include. Right. And it doesn't actually say that in there, so right. or it says projected. But my question on that then, so projected non-residential, <clears throat> just to use that as the example we're doing, of four twenty-seven nine twenty-eight, is that fifty percent on the nose of what the projected total build out is, and that's how you got that number? 
Uh, yes. So okay. that, and, I, and this isn't us. This is. I mean, the they. The we should check with. The but we should check with them because and if, say that, how if they got that's it. where they got the number, then it's saying this is what fifty percent of a build out would be, right. visiony as opposed to the, there's nothing visiony about four twenty seven nine twenty eight exactly, right. you know. But if you're saying that's what fifty percent would be, this is the target. That's good. But listed as projected as this exact number is remarkably specific. So maybe having the um, pie chart above that and then a statement yeah. saying, assuming this mix, here's what that would look like, right. given we, a certain We assumptions. want to err on, I do anyway, want to err on the side of like, this is a vision thing, a visionary document. And we- Replace, replace um, for, uh, for projected the target. Right, something like that to indicate like, this is sort of, this is what we want. We? As a, and remember, we, we talked about changing um, <clears throat> things from exact number, exact like footage to like or height to like stories, say, and the range of stories. This is the same kind of thing that I think when we have projected numbers that are really, really exact, that could be a little. But problem. am I? I think I'm correct in saying, and I'll, I guess I'll ask that to, to Darren. Is this chart? This chart, which shows thirty percent non-residential. The reality is, it could be. 100% residential. Am I right? Uh, so the regulations that we're contemplating don't put a restriction on, well, they put some restrictions on what has to be commercial and what has to be residential. But ultimately, the point is that that pie chart is a target and it's a projection and a vision. Okay. So what, right. so so that, that, uh, <clears throat> with that in mind, why do we need the chart? Why do we need the, the, the actual listed out chart? Why not just use the pie chart? is more of a, of a representation of a target. I think part of the reasoning behind showing those numbers is just to give a sense of what 50% residential in this land area would look like, how many units that is, how much square footage. But I think you know, if we wanted to make that a little more vague, a little more open-ended, um, there could be some more detailed analysis of assuming X number of acres in this district at 50% with all of the other restrictions you would need like stormwater roads etc this is what that would look like i guess uh, I, i'm i mean you could do it with two pie charts and leave all the numbers out you know here's existing here's right. yeah yeah but I, i'm i'm still stunned that something that significant in terms of a concept isn't written somewhere you know it's i'm going back to chapter two to to see what this vision and it's it's not i haven't found it yet it might might be in there but but in their discussion of the mixed use south as a neighborhood, it does you know the vision. It doesn't say, you know, you've got a lot right now, and we're recommending that you lower that. You know, and it's it doesn't say that. It's still kind of a stunning concept. Um, it, it's a fine concept, you know, because I think that uh, you know the, the 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 outlets are are an anomaly. It mentions the outlets. It mentions that it's still looking to have a regional and local draw. So. The language supports what's currently there doesn't actually say, you know, your your mix is off and we recommend that you change it. One of the other things that makes that chart for for a you know a, um, somebody who's not well versed in this, like myself, um, it uses acres. It uses dwelling units, it uses dwelling units per acre, it uses GSF, it uses GSF per acre. Um, that's a lot of different values put into one bucket. Uh, I'm looking. I'm actually went back to the to the mixed use north, you know, and and what's the real what's the real message that we want to get across on that? Um, is it this is the total area and this is the estimated building area, um, and then we have a pie chart that breaks out what the uses are. I think that that's it follows along what Josh was just saying. That's almost too granular for vision statements, um, and I. I think that's where we were aiming last time around was to make this more visionary. The numbers are fine, keep them. When we start looking at regulations, then we can take the numbers and say we want to have by you know a regulation to, to support this or something. But but using I mean you can use words like suggested or recommended that are a little more flexible. <laughs> but going on, I think one of the comments that John had, had is that this was really, really long. So we've got stuff in here that most I think most people are going to start and they're going to go over it and it's not going to stand out. So 
I guess my, my question, and I, I'm glad he brought it up, really, is what's, what's, what's the real target, what's the real drive for these numbers? And is it to show people what the idea is? If that's the case, then generally pie charts work better than lines of numbers, unless you're a, an accountant or a, you know, somebody who works with them. I mean, it really, if you're just reading through it and you want to get what idea what the target is, I like your idea of having this is what the current, this is a pie chart that shows the current mix, and this is what our anticipated you know, future mix could be. And you could put, if the pie charts are a little bigger, you could actually put the number of units that are in there in the pie chart. So um, just in case they're trying to tie this back to chapter two, the information starts on 20, page 26. And there seems to be a couple pages of discussion about the build out and the vision and I'm still not seeing anything that suggests that we're trying to shrink the commercial uh, non-residential. Well, we're not the consultants I'm trying to understand how that, how they arrived at those numbers. But even if we, if we take the numbers away, then it's somewhat irrelevant because we're not saying that it's going to be a reduction necessarily. I mean, it's a, a but they, I think they arrived at them based on their build-out analysis, based on you know what they, the assumptions they made in a model. So I'd like to know, for ourselves, what that you know, what the changes, if the recommended changes are going to produce that outcome, that should be known and deliberate rather than oh whoops we accidentally reduced the commercial unintentionally. So another pass at making this less. Specific and more visionary. Okay. And that would carry through all of Chapter 6. The um, language in Chapter 2 talks about, uh, refer, it continuously refers to 600,000 square feet of retail slash commercial. And that number doesn't match either of, uh, of this. Uh, <coughs> any of these what ones. page are you on? Um, it starts at 26. Let's see. And that's for the entire, all four neighborhoods, not just one district. So. At present, the ETC has just over 600,000 gross square feet. Okay. That means that's, so that's adding it all up. Right. Yeah. All the different neighborhoods in Chapter 6. And... Uh, I guess that, you know, I mean, I'm just digging deeper on this, but if you know you've got 600,000 square feet of non-residential and you know you've got four different neighborhoods to put it in some discussion of what's desirable in each neighborhood and why as part of the vision, um, you know, that's easy to follow would be... I mean, this is fundamentally back to my comment about it's hard to read because there's stuff buried in here that's actually buried. Yeah. It's not in there like it makes sense because you're reading it like a book. It's, it's embedded, and you have to really be able to track back and forth between all the sidebars and the pie charts and the colors and the, in order to pick it out and tie it together. And maybe a little, I'm just saying, you know, craft a story that's easier to follow than than bouncing around a little bit. And who's deciding how many people we can handle in a given area? Or what the target population is for, I don't know, when's this go out to? 2050? Something like that? So it's based on sewer capacity, it's based on buildable space, it's based on um, you know what the market might pr uh, provide um, and that's where all of those projections come from um, and I think that should be stated somewhere in this document so people have an idea of where these numbers were arrived at and how mm -hmm. and I mean I guess you know I may be conflating some of what I heard in one recent listening session um, <clears throat> with this, but there was an overlap between merger and what's happening to the town. We don't use the word merger. Yeah, they do now. We don't hear. Okay. <laughs> Con consolidation 
and planning and yeah. a vision of what the yeah. town wants to be. So I think John's right. I think that, you know, to well, we, some extent, this is very confusing and it's not clear cut and it's not really designed for the average citizen to look at and understand. And so, I'm not I'm not casting aspersions on the average citizen because the average citizen in Essex is pretty smart. That should be readable. And to your point, John, um, real quick about the neighborhood mix. It is in the vision statements for those neighborhoods, but they are broken up over several different pages, and there isn't one place where it necessarily talks about all of that in the bigger pictures. So to make it more readable to the average reader, that would probably help. And to answer those kinds of questions that are likely to come up, like, how did you arrive at these yep. numbers? What are these numbers based upon? So, so to follow up on that, right in the Chapter 2, it says details of this analysis are provided in Appendix B. We don't have an Appendix B. It is in the appendices document, which we didn't put in your packet for today because it hasn't changed since the original, but it is in the reference uh, section. But I, it's the same sort of thing as bouncing around. So I mean, right. we asked... I'll, I'll be picky, but we did ask for a complete document. We didn't get a complete document. So it's just a, a point of, from my perspective, we got th we got the meat, but we didn't get the whole thing. So just, I think, keep in mind as we're going forward. It's, you know, All right, so, so now we have another place a 100-page vision statement with another 100 or 200 pages of appendices, and that's the complete document? And we're sure. trying to say, oh, here, this is a vision, right? See what I mean? It's like, uh, and you need, you don't want to put everything you ever thought of into the report, but, um, you know, I think to boil it down just a little bit so that you have the clear vision, and even if it references an appendix, you know, if you want to know more about where these yeah. numbers came from, here, here's the studies or here are the the you know the planning documents or something that that this is based on but but just to touch on okay well how did this really come to be I think would be helpful mm -hmm. and maybe it helps streamline the the thing for you know the the part that we all hope people read which is the first hundred pages which maybe it gets down to seventy five or something. fifty <laughs> fifty fifty yeah. We're definitely in a draft mode, independent of anything else. Um, no, this 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 is the reason for the, that it's here. Johnny, you got more? I stick uh, with that. Oh, I, like I said, I, most of my comments I I made them you know in writing because I was trying to start the discussion so as if we move through people's comments you know we'll hit everything but I mean that's really the big thing is like you know it I mean how long have we been reading this for a long time and we still are finding things that you know wow and and I'm just you know we want it to be friendly for people to to be able to pick it up and get get the idea about what's happening what do we really want you know oh by the way we're trying to modify the mix of of uses in certain neighborhoods for these reasons and that 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 idea might be something that was missed the last time around when we talked about making this more visionary that actually could change the style of writing mm -hmm. you know instead of instead of just taking hard references out of a out of the document maybe it's a more appropriate to actually redo the document in a slightly different way or a drastically different way to to emphasize vision statements and less about um, uh, the specifics, and it really feels like they just, you know, pulled some of the specific numbers but left the same format in. Well, let, let me ask you another question because this this might help. The follow-up document, the one that actually has the meat in it about the details and how you, is like half of this document that document? I mean, are we, did we the pre or write? The no, the, the, like that, we're going to do the regulations, regulations right? Yeah. So the zoning regs, if I'm not mistaken, are going to look an awful lot like the later chapters in this. Mm -hmm. You know, with here's the design of a block, and here's how big it should be, and here are the building types and all that, right? 
Well, that's what we're hoping to. Is so, it? does the vision, can the vision push some of that out into the regulations and and let this... So, here's a, here's a thought on some of that, though. What is it, what if we, if, if as we're going into that, we don't have, we can't get concurrence or agreement on the regulations required to say, you're going to have this type of building only here and this type of building only here. We've got a vision that we want to try to get there, but if we can't do it in regulations in one shot, I mean, that my thought was that the regulations might take multiple cycles before we get to this vision. You know, we're, we're going to have to make steps because yes. because we may have to we may have to make multiple iterations of those regulations until we get to this this design point. But if we have it here, we won't have lost it. And if we don't have it here, we're apt to lose it. If we don't have that consistent presentation, you know, I think there should be a statement in there though that says those tip types of visions that you have for each area is subject to change because you don't want to, you know, past history of boards with the past twenty years, even though a master plan and the ETC next is a, a vision and a guideline, some boards stick to it and they're not as flexible to say, uh, yeah, no, that's. We're not going to have that flexibility to change something. So, so if it says that they're subject to modification based on just the a time statement and the situation at hand, something along those lines. Anything to emphasize that this is a vision, not a not the regulation. This is where this is a a, a scope or a target. How we actually get there, we're going to work out. That's part of the next discussion too, but that's also going to be with the regulation. Johnny, can it be more of a a couple of examples rather than the way the regs would be laid out? These are the forms for the zoning district, and just maybe take one. Yeah, I I've I've made no comments whatsoever on the form piece. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> yet. Um, there, you know, because you you need to show some examples, and you want to, you know, give people an idea of what the types of construction elements you're talking about, and what's appropriate, and what part, you know, kit of parts are you going to use for different. Things. That was all fine. I, I I didn't have any issue with that stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm still back on the. Um, you're telling me you you recommend this for this neighborhood, and and. I just want to make sure we get it. I want to make sure it matches what we're all thinking and that, you know, that part of the vision is clear enough for everybody else because it's taken me, you know, quite a, a while and, and I believe I know what I'm looking at, you know, to, um, to put it together, you know, like to really say, oh, okay, I, I see what they're what what we are saying our vision is for that neighborhood because I want that to be really clear so we had, we had trouble figuring that out even with the study before here's what the study shows us we are having trouble achieving that within the regulations right so so the most important thing is for our vision to be clear if we if we can as a group know what we are trying to achieve that's going to make everything else easier and and I just keep reminding us that when we say this is our vision we should be reasonably sure it's achievable within our boundaries uh, and not you know kind of you know ignoring re certain realities that earlier visions have ignored that's okay hold that thought hold that thought Mr. Mangan. I'd, I'd second everything he's saying. He's bringing up some good points, and it also goes back to our previous discussions on pulling. I mean, my, my biggest uh, review of this latest doc was our concerns that we mentioned about pulling regulations out. And John's points just further drive that home. And I'm, it's causing me to rethink some of even my previous feedback. And as I look at the doc, it seems like, it, I mean, there's one little section of a vision statement for each area. It seems like that should be expanded considerably to really focus more on the what or the what we want to do, not the how we're going to do it. And I think there's too much of the how we're going to do it in this doc, and that should be just all taken right out. I mean, I hate to say it, but it seems like it, you might might provide an example of here's how we might do it or how we're going to approach it, but getting to those specifics, I think, 
It's, I mean, it's, it's a very confusing doc, and I wouldn't, you know, unless someone's going to sit there and figure out all the percentages and numbers, this stuff is going to be messed. And I, w I would just say to that before we move over, that any of the work that's been done is not is not lost or wasted. It's you have to go through this in order to decide yeah. where you need to be. So yeah. there's nothing to say that that we shouldn't have done this level of detail or taken this approach. Yeah. So I think it's just this is the natural iteration of, of how yeah. this stuff goes. You know, I, I actually like everything that's in there. I'm just struggling with how to present it. That's yeah. Yeah. I will also know. I just want to want to know one other thing that's extremely minor. But Sharon, just take note. Um, starting on page eighty, chapter seven, it, the bullets say key recommendations, but only on that first slide. The following slides just say key. I, I assume it's they're all supposed to say key recommendations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts right now? <coughs> that's a dangerous question. Wait a minute. I, I need a new page. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think I think John has a good point. I, I think one of the one of the things that, that probably bothers me the most about this is that some of us have been talking about this for in different formats or in different forums for what three years now, and and and. You know, we just, you know, we we have we we have a nice document, but I'm not sure it's it's exactly where you know we we need to be with taking it beyond us out out to the world, and it sort of bothers it bothers me a little bit because I don't know maybe we didn't express ourselves well enough when we when with the consultants and the staff when we were putting this together, you know. Did we have different ideas that we we couldn't uh, get them to fully grasp? So, yeah, I, I think you know. It, Again, I don't think we should consider any of the time wasted or, or missed or anything like that because, you know, we early on we were looking for guidance, and then we got to a point where we wanted to see a full document. So we're really, I, I feel we're in a, we're in a natural progression through this review process as we've seen. The full document. Mm -hmm. We wanted it different, and we're making changes to it. Josh, uh, this ties into what we've been, everything we've been saying. So, page I'm on page 22, as it says in the document, and the the paragraph heading is overall vision. And <clears throat> if we're thinking about readability and getting it out there, something called overall vision, you shouldn't have to wait until page 22. Right. We have we, we have a lot of like if you look at that chapter it's in chapter two, we have like here's this meeting we had, here's these nice people who came to the meeting, oh and here's the vision like it, at the very least if you're gonna put it in chapter two it should be, here's the overall vision, here's the meetings we had to get there, but it, this should be like page one in bright red ink if this is the direction where it's like here's our overall vision and then if you look at the little. The well, I gotta tell you, red sometimes is hard to see. So okay. as the eyes get but older, that's a really good point neon. because yeah. for the people that care enough to go to the history, let them let them do let that. them find the history. Let them but have that fun. Yeah, I kind of agree. <clears> but then what's good funny good. is under, underneath that that highlighted vision, it then says it says what I think is the actual vision. After that, this vision speaks to the important community needs, making the ETC better connected, and more cohesive. That's the vision. Where Making, are you reading that from? Right under, so overall vision. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's catchy. That should be the title of the document. That's the whole thing. You've got the, the Essex Town Center, ETC is a diverse community, et cetera, et cetera. And then right in this little, like, one paragraph in black, the sentence. John, can you make up some Making the ETC better connected and more cohesive. Like, that's that's the whole thing. And it's this one sentence hiding in, paragraph, in page 22 after this lengthy, like, here are all the meetings we went to. It's like... We want it better connect. We want people walking. Well, look at, we can delete 21 <clears throat> pages and just pick up right there. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, what so do we actually want? We I want a more a... cohesive, better connected yes. ETC. And then we're, once we're it, once everyone gets that, like yeah. that's why we're here. Here's how it's going to happen. And here's Your why we here's why we want the same it. So far. I, I yeah. want to. I just want to point out one other thing, and this is just total graphics. All right. So when, if you guys are sitting over there, I know you can't read this, but you can see it. So if I show you this page, what is the most punch? Picture. The picture, the block, right? The, the, right? It's not the vision statement. 
right. the vision statement is the weakest thing on the page and I I was uh, that was another one of my comments that I just they 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 need to look at that because you know graphics are important to this and if you keep playing with colors and boxes and pictures and you get all the stuff on the page you've got competing weights competing you know strengths and you want to make the thing that's the most important the punchiest and yeah. and if that vision statement is you know forgetting that it's on page 26 but if it's if it's uh, 22 if if it's that not the thing that jumps off the page at you then maybe you're that should almost be repeated on it on the heading of every single chapter Put the blue up here. And make the yeah, better but connected and more cohesive. Like the every, be, right, every chapter, be, like that, that and then the every time you see the box the that's document. all highlighted, then you yeah. know that's the better connected, more cohesive. Here's how this neighborhood's going to make that happen. Better connected, more cohesive. Here's how this neighborhood's going to make it happen. And then when people are in that mindset, we keep repeating it. Then it's like, oh, I see you're going to put these buildings like this, and the, set the setbacks are going to be this. That'll make it better connected and more cohesive. I get it. People will be out walking. Better connected, more cohesive. Like, just drill that. Right. That's the whole thing. Well, it's kind of like when we look at our, our the staff reports. You say, this is the finding. This is why it meets this criteria. This is why mm -hmm. it meets it. So that's a really good point, is calling that out. So we're talking about a redesign of this document. And if we, we, asked, we talked about it last time, making visionary. This is even more visionary. Mm -hmm. Let's roll it out to the, you guys are okay, let's roll it out to the folks that are here. Um, Paula, you, well, you were one, jumping. One of the things I was going to say is with the discussion that's gone on tonight, I see this as sort of the difference between our previous town plans and the document representing the current town plan. Yes, I would not disagree. We went from 100 plus pages down to a lot less. And readable and enjoyable in reading okay folks you're on the spot you're here we need to hear from you <laughs> we're not yeah this is, this is really good discussion and conversation because we want people to be interested and to know why and I think back to um, I think the last meeting or a couple of meetings ago the woman that said what's our purpose so that kind of you know brings it brings it to the to the front yeah. I think we we've had a couple of different times it's been touched on either me, previous meetings or tonight you know what's the, what's the goal for the town and I think we've got to avoid I mean we're really focused in this area though you know the woman that was here at the last meeting was talking about what's Essex's vision you know we're, we're working with a subset of that so I don't want to I want to make sure we don't travel too far outside of this mm -hmm. this area but that statement is the leading statement. It should be the title page of our document. It should be everything. It it's should the be headings in the top it, of each it's, page. It's, it's there. Mr. Lyons, you've been you've been joining us once in a while. Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Uh, I think it is a little confusing you know, as I look at some of the, the vision statements. It's not entirely clear to me what we're trying to accomplish. Um, though you know, I have you know seen the process now. And it's been very slow. Um, because we've been looking at a lot of the same content for a very, very, very long time. But my experience has been probably 18 months, and a lot of the content really hasn't changed. Um, so the, the slowness, I think, is um, one of the observations I'd make. And, and the clarity of intent with each of these centers uh, and districts isn't entirely clear to me. So what I end up trying to do is look at, okay, what's the current use that's allowed in terms of the very specific regulations, and what are you guys moving to? and try to drive my own, draw my own conclusions from it. But the document itself doesn't make it clear to me exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And so I've struggled that, with that since day one, and so mm -hmm. I went to the comparison of the very detailed items to try to draw my own conclusions. It would be helpful to be led a little bit more uh, on what we're trying to accomplish, particularly in each of the districts. But I would like to thank you know the staff because I did make some very uh, what I thought important uh, pieces of input. It took a while, but it got implemented. <laughs> you know, so I do appreciate that. Thank you for thanking us. <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear about those vision statements, they were crafted partially to be regulatory and partially to be plugged right into the. Um, district vision statements which are, have a regulatory weight and have some sort of 
um, statutory you know role but if as we're hearing this plan needs to be more visionary and convey that vision better we can save those vision statements clarify them in the plan but put them back into the regulations and i think what we're, that's the theme we're hearing is a lot of this sounds great but it needs to be in the regulations not in a planning document that needs to more clearly convey where we're going so unless we want to go into stuff I'd, I'd almost like to shift into the other portion of the discussion which i think that this is a great this is immediately related relatable to that which is you know getting a, a Increased buy-in from other staff, other other staff, or other departments, prior to you know moving this forward, and I think some of the the contention, and you guys can speak to the specifics, but but my belief is that some of the contention is on the specifics that we put in that are not, as John John E mentioned, are not truly obtainable. So, if we make this more visionary that should help with some of that discussion because we're not tying it to a specific, you know, quantity or, or right. gross square foot versus acres versus Dwelling units. per or acre. Or putting a median down the middle of the road or something like that. It really shouldn't even say that. What is, why do you want to do that is what it should say. You know, if the, what, what is the intent of doing that? Yeah, and that, that was something that was, I, will, I thought was interesting in the comments. Um, from Dennis Lutz when he was saying, if you want more pedestrian safety, here is what you should be doing. If, you, if you're calling out pedestrianness in the vision document, then instead of saying, let's you know, put a median, yep. try this instead. So if we, to your point, if the document just said, we'd like better pedestrian stuff because better connected, more cohesive, then he would say, oh, here's how I recommend doing that, perhaps. And that could be, that could change as technology changes as the... Right as the build-out mix changes, as personnel change, as the population changes, but we have the vision of better connectivity, greater walkability, and so forth. And one thing that we'll want to be careful of as we sort of try to distill it down a little more is not getting it too mushy and making it clear exactly what the intent is and trying to be as specific as possible, again, without locking in too, much, too many of those details. So... You know, when we say we want, you know, better connected, more cohesive ETC, we have to say what that means, what that, what specific changes might be made. But we can talk about making better pedestrian crossings on Route 15, making, you know, uh, improving safety and improving traffic flow on. Right. Well, see, and you've already done that in 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 most of the most of the uh, neighborhood descriptions. Neighborhood, okay. You already right. talked about <clears throat> providing. Uh, provide or enable access to transit stop within walkable. I mean, so right. that stuff yeah. is there. They're clear objectives and goals. They're just not exactly how you're going to do it. So, if, and if we go back to the, you know, the, we, we start off, you start off with, um, you start off with use, use lots and density, mix use cell, page 61. The first thing you're talking about is density and so forth. The second thing is, then we start getting into the vision. So if, we're, if, we emp if we provide emphasis on the vision, which is walkable and so forth, then reorganize some of this stuff. Right around. Section B should be Section A. I mean, that's, that's the vision. And then Section A is potential ways of getting there. Right. Like given, given the overall vision, this is how this neighborhood is going to achieve that. And that also calls out the distinction between the neighborhoods and why we have different neighborhoods and, and zoning areas like this is a smaller scale version of better connected more cohesive here's what that means this is a larger scale here's what that means and then you put the data in after that and it's like oh now i see what they're saying because this is what that could look like these numbers are much larger in mixed use south than <clears throat> the historic center i get it and it draw it draws the reader along a little better that way if you keep tagging back to the vision and saying this is how this neighborhood does it and then the regulatory stuff follows pretty naturally. It's like, oh, of course they're requesting, again, this setback and facing a primary street such and such because that does provide the connectivity. And I think having Mr. Lyons, rep and I forget your first name. Jeff. Jeff, thank you. Um, having Jeff speak to us of the fact that he was having to go through and keep going back and forth and look for it, I, I feel 
to really reiterate what Josh just said, putting that intent first, how does it meet the vision? And then give it some potential enabling mechanisms. It's got to be potential because the regulations are going to be the actual enablers. And we've had a number of, go ahead, Paula. I was just going to say, and that, that might be something to have as a note in this, that supporting regulations will follow something, you know. Um, you got something to say. Uh, you got something to I, say. Still Out with it. I, <laughs> I, I, um. I've been following the conversation between staff and, and their comments on, you know, getting into the, you know, what happens if you, when you actually implement some of these specific things. And I was hoping that that really does kind of get pushed out of the vision, you know, like that, and maybe, maybe it helps us if we don't have as many specific recommendations for do this on route 15 kind of mm -hmm. kind of specifics in the vision you know again it should be as you said we want to achieve this on route 15 and then the document can have examples of how that has happened in other places and then some sometime down the road you're choosing it or you're working with Dennis and with the rest of the community staff to figure out how to achieve it and then you that project comes forward under its own merits with its own uh, pros and cons but it's not it's not stuck as a you know here's a problem if you have that vision right because we don't know that yet we don't know the final execution and I guess I guess if we think we have final executions in our vision then maybe we didn't mean to do that Here's another way to think about it is, you know, in our town plan in the in chapter one, there's uh, general policies, goals, and actions. There's general policy is the overall statement of what we want to do with land use or housing or the economy. The goals are these, you know, specific points about, you know, what the desired condition is. And then there are actions that go along with that that help achieve those goals. So I'm hearing that's maybe what we want to do is, with this plan is say, you know, we want the general policy of better connected, connected more cohesive, more cohesive ETC, and then some goals about, <laughs> okay. but, and then some goals about what that looks like and what that means. But the actions to come in that regulatory right. part of things, like better connected, more cohesive, goal walkability on Route 15, regulations, sample regulation in Appendix A, yeah. real real like regulations forthcoming, something something. Here's example actions of what that could look like, right. but not or necessarily public works, public works spec, not even in yeah, regulations. Yeah, yeah. You know, so would you use the you regulatory put put it where it needs to be, and not necessarily in this. I mean, does it? I'm not hearing that we're really Dave. You haven't said a whole lot, but I haven't seen you get too antsy about anything either. So, I don't feel like we're all that. We're really out of sync with what we want to see in this, which is vision oriented with the with the goal or the, the, the true vision is buried currently, put it forefront and you know I, I like the idea of having it as as in the header on every single page because it is what we're trying to achieve. And then each section, how does that section meet or enhance that goal? And you've already like I said, you've already done that by by the the in the neighborhoods, you've already got elements that that do that. So put what we want up front, you know, put the goal up front, not buried. No no reference to regulatory type quantities or something like that. If we want, if we want to put graphs in there, and my what I'm heard is is use little less. Uh, Specificity. Use what we've got now. What we could have in the future. Right. Or use it as a way of saying, you know, this is instructive. This is example. Um, or this is a study or analysis of, analysis of what that would look like. But it's not necessarily a prescription. So one of the things that we've frequently done, that I do at my work, is when I'm working with the, with the, with the customers, is 
these are the points that I'm, I'm delivering. Now, if you want to see it, here's, here's the, the, the 200 pages of support documentation that got me to these 10 bullet points. They're there if you're available, but most of the time it's not, it's not necessary or it's, it doesn't really impact right. the, the use. It, it's all the history, the, the stuff. So that's the appendices that we, that we park all these extra details in. Um, and that way people, we don't, we don't lose anything. And it's still there for future. It's almost like you can just change the title on this to be, uh, you know, just put on the shelf for the future because it's all there. It's mm -hmm. all, it's it's all there. You know, and, and, and then you put out a, a re-blended version of it that just has the more readability, but you can just keep that. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, maybe this is Appendix 2 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, well, the other thing is all those appendices, there's yeah. three or four of them, but they're all in one big document, so yeah. we could probably split them up. But I think we have the idea of... I was going to say, I think we've, we've been talking about it for an hour. Yeah. I think we're clear on where it's got to so, go. <laughs> moving this forward, I mean, you've, my expectation based on the emails that have been sent is that you folks will be working with the other departments to try to get better buy-in. I mean, I, I feel like this redesign should be done first. Maybe get their buy-in quicker. It might, if, if we do this redesign, and then I, I'd really like to invite them to meet with us as well. Because I don't, I'm worried that some of our intent may, may get lost in the technical representation. Or, you know, because it is, when you guys start talking inter staff, it's probably a little more technical, and some of our vision to Ned's point, might not be, we might not be able to communicate it clearly to you. So now you're diluting it by clear by bringing it to them. So can we be involved? Can we help? Um, if it's if we can't invite, you know, Aaron or Dennis to to meet with us at our time, then you know potentially we have members that might be able to meet during the daytime with them. I know John Shu had said that he'd be willing to do that, and uh, he could be one representative. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And maybe we can get Ned. <laughs> and, and we see enough of Ned. <laughs> maybe John, Johnny, if he's in town. No. I'm not sure. Or Josh or whomever. I'm, well, I'm not sure yet because yeah. I haven't made peace with what he's written yet. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, I think that the key, for me, the, the offer is that I would really like to have public works, fire, police, whoever has commentary that's unresolved, you know, once we recraft this, um, then I'd, li I'd like them to take a different look at it and maybe sit with us or us sit with them. And, uh, I, just, I also want to say that, you know, the, the town in general, whether it's through the administrative side or discussions of new buildings or any of the things that I need a new highway, I need to fix my salt shed, whatever it is, you know, it all does cost money, but you've got to think about these things first. And you know, the we, we've got years and years to implement the things that we are visioning here, and and it's not fair to throw a big dollar number out there and scare everyone away right now because that's just that shouldn't really be how this works. We should be trying to find the vision that's meaningful to our community first. And you know we'll work our way towards achieving it over time. Okay. Yeah, you're you're a hundred percent right. You have to make the decision that we're going to move forward on a long-term basis, or stay where we are and go backwards. We got gotcha. you. Yep. Okay. Um, any any last words on on this from any of you folks? Patriots <laughs> plan. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. I think we've got the only thing we've got left now is the minutes from August 8th. Does anyone want to offer a motion? Approved the minutes, yeah. I'll second that. Okay, <clears throat> opening the minutes. Hang on a second. There we go. Does anyone have any amendments they want to offer to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as written? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes carry 6-0. Thank you. We are done. We have other business.
we I have just it's a empty. couple of things. Blank. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know that um, I brought, uh, I, I've reached out to the town attorney to bring an action against Rick Bow for the dumpsters. The, the situation is horrendous um, still. He's not picking up outside the dumpsters and um, people are still complaining. So um, we have one year to act on my end. Are you on here? So um, we're going to be doing that soon. The next thing is, as a result of the um, bed and breakfast, <laughs> people are, I should say, as a result of the Essex Reporter, Reporter article, um, people are calling up. So I'm going to be, we're going to be seeing more um, of these uses coming before the zoning board. So I'll bring them to your attention as they come forward. At the last zoning board hearing, they basically, the only condition they put on there was to um, adhere to all the state requirements of a bed and breakfast, of a Airbnb, sorry. Um, so, again, the unspecified use requires me to inform you of these applications, and I will do so as they come forward. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see where, where that must follow all the state. That's a yeah. little ambiguous. Mm. So Very good. Do we need to get signature pages updated with John's? Yes, thank you. You can just make your own little line and sign right out. You can cross his name out, or you can make a new line. We've done that in the past, but yes. I'm not on this one. You're, You're not, not on, on it? it? No. Okay, so let's get a new back page. Okay. This. Do you guys want to hang out, or do you want to? <laughs> I don't even know. If you can do it quick, so we'll wait. Well, we can adjourn and still sign okay. off. Okay, so So I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are adjourned. Who is it? That's the